This is Salma Schimmel for the group room at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, joined now by Dr. Martine Picard, head of medicine at the Jules Bardet Cancer Center in Brussels, Belgium, also the president of ESMO. Welcome, Dr. Picard, and thank Hi. you for making time. Your study has been well spoken about by so many people I've been interviewing, and so I'm very pleased that we get to discuss your work up close and personal right now. Tell us about it. Well, you know, when we designed this trial back in 2000, we were indeed very interested in the drug trastuzumab, but also interested in the duration question. And we made an analogy with tamoxifen, which I think has been the first big success in personalized treatment for breast cancer. This is a very important drug for women with hormone receptor positive disease. And for this drug, it's very important that we give it for longer times. So there were clinical trials early on showing that two years was better than one year, five years was better than two years. And now we heard at this meeting that 10 years is slightly better than five years. And so we were looking at this drug, trastuzumab, which targets another receptor a growth factor receptor, and we thought this drug will also work better if we give it longer. And the choice of two years was based, also, of course, on cost consideration. In retrospect, of course, now that we know that there is no difference in efficacy between two years and one year, I sometimes think that it would have been more important to look at a shorter duration, but we couldn't know at that time. But this drug is terribly effective and can synergize with chemotherapy. So it's possible at the end of the day that at least for some patients yet to be identified, you don't need the one year, which is very expensive, uh, complicated, and uh, this is still a treatment that many women in the world cannot access because of the high cost. So I don't know if uh, the company um, Roche would have accepted the idea of a shorter arm, treatment arm. In any case, we went for the longer treatment arm, and now we had to wait eight years for the results. Can you imagine? So we haven't heard about this two-year arm for eight years, and the results are there. It's not better. So I think that is, it is an important information for doctors and patients. I have had many patients asking, shouldn't I take this drug longer? So now we have very solid results telling us that there is no benefit, there is a slight increase in toxicity, not any severe toxicity, but there is some increase. So the one year is really the golden standard. Now, there was also the Canadian research that talks about the six month for subtypes, but how do you know is that even relevant to your research at all, where there's this subtype that could possibly take it for a shorter period of time? Well, you know, HER2-positive breast cancer in itself is one subtype, but it's likely that there is also heterogeneity. And in particular, um, we think that the behavior of the HER2-positive cancers can slightly differ, differ according to hormone receptor status. Now, we did this analysis in HERA, looking at treatment duration, and uh, in fact, we did not find a difference. The two-year arm uh, does not help hormone receptor positive or hormone receptor negative. It's not better than one year. There was, however, a very slight difference at a certain point in time, and we still have problems. We don't know if that's just by chance or if there is some biological a reason that we need to explore. But in any case, uh, the conclusion is that there doesn't seem to be a difference. Now that you have this validation, we know about one year being probably the, the gold standard. In countries where there's access problems or reimbursement issues, do you think that this will help uh, validate for the regulatory agencies that govern access. Do you think this will be in benefit for patients who may have difficulty getting a drug? Well, I'm hoping that because we are showing now at eight years median follow-up very strong results 
for the one year arm. You know, we see a very robust decrease in the risk of relapse and death. Um, I'm hoping that, yes, that could influence some governments which have still said no until now for reimbursement of the drug. Of course, there is still the hope that perhaps some of the trials looking at the shorter duration may find a group that needs less that would help these countries. But you see, I'm very frustrated to watch this happening because I think the question about the duration of a targeted drug in oncology is important and has to be addressed at the beginning. What we have done here, trying to retrospectively investigate shorter durations and then being obliged to show they are non-inferior is a nightmare. Every statistician can tell you that to demonstrate non-inferiority is very hard, that you need lots of patients to do that. So I find this very um, unsatisfactory. So we put more than 10,000 women in the trials to show that Herceptin works. And now we are asking more than 10,000 women to enroll in trials looking at shorter durations. If we had done a good job at the beginning, you know, the problem will be solved. And then on top of that, we will be moving soon to probably two anti her 2 drugs. And the question of duration will have to be asked again. What happens now, this study is completed and has answered such an important question. As a researcher, what is your next step? So what does this study lead to? So viewers and patients can sort of understand what is this research process like? Because it's ongoing. Yeah, well, in her to positive disease, it's uh, really very gratifying to see that so many new good drugs have been developed since trastuzumab was introduced in the clinic. So we are now very uh, keen to look at two anti her 2 drugs, either two antibodies or an antibody and a small molecule that inhibits the tyrosine kinase. So we are really interested in seeing whether we can further improve the results with these two agents instead of just trastuzumab. And one large trial has already been completed, ALTO, which looks at trastuzumab and lapatinib. And the other trial is recruiting extremely fast. It's the trial looking at trastuzumab and pertuzumab, which is going to probably finish accrual at the end of next year. So the answer will come probably around 2016, something like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Martine Picard, Head of Medicine at the Jules Bourdais Cancer Center in Brussels, Belgium, and President of ESMO.